We had a question from one of the viewers on YouTube asking, how do I get into the clinch? Because I keep trying to clinch the guy and he keeps punching me in the face every time I try. And I just keep trying to grab his head and I can't close the distance. So what the heck do I do? Well, I'll give you some options. If this is an MMA fight, you have slightly different options than if it is a kickboxing fight, etc. We're going to start outside of range right here. I'm pretty close to the same height as, as my buddy Fang right here. So you're probably thinking, I'm just going to reach over here, but you'll notice my arms are on the outside, his are on the inside, so he's going to win that exchange. On a clinch, I want my arms on the inside. So come on up close here, very, very close, right? The very first thing, this principle, you have to internalize, reach to the inside, okay? A couple of grips. It's not just reaching for double collar ties, which some people weirdly call the, the Muay Thai clinch, in spite of the fact that there are dozens and dozens of ways to clinch in Muay Thai, right? We have collar ties, we've got bicep tie-up, right? We've got double bicep tie-ups, we've got reverse collar ties, we've got arm drags. There are lots of ways we can clinch. Clinch just means grab something. But the very first principle, reach for the inside. If my arms come to the outside, you might remember this from the hook video I posted the other day. If I'm swinging my arm in a wide arc, he's going to beat me to the punch, literally beat me to the punch every time because his arms are on the inside and mine are on the outside, which is why I told you move off the center line around that punch so we can hit him there. Move off the center line around the punch so we can hit him there. They are straight lines, not, not swings, right? So we don't want to swing for him. Now, what if he's one of these guys with evasive fancy footwork and he's moving all over the place? Maybe Fang wants to grab me and I'm just like, nope, 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 get off, stay away, nope, nope, bah, 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 bah. and he's just lighting me up from the outside. That might be your problem. So if I'm having a problem catching a guy, Fang's being the evasive fighter here, move away, don't let me grab you, right? We have a few other options. We're gonna bridge the distance with a flying knee. Okay, get his focus on the knee. Ah! So it's not on your hands. So he's the evasive fighter moving around all over. And instead of just chasing him, first of all, I might take a step back to invite him to come forward. Oh, in which case, I'll jump up there with a flying knee and grab him on the way down. It doesn't even have to be super high. One step, one leap, bring the knee up and grab, ah, and then proceed your beat down once you get, once you have them. Let's say this is an MMA fight and not a Muay Thai fight, and I want to clinch. And you might be thinking, well, I'm not that great of a grappler. Become one. I'm going to shoot. Notice I've got the leg, but I can slide this up here, meaning I also have an underhook, meaning look, now I've got a clinch. Now we can do all kinds of clinch work if that's what we want. A few basics of the clinch, right? Clinching means grabbing, means collar ties, means reverse collar ties, it means underhooks, it means whizzers, it means over-under clinches, it means bicep tie-ups, okay? It means two-on-ones, Russian tie-ups, right? These are all clinches. There are many, many ways to clinch, right? It's not just grabbing the head, okay? It could mean a side headlock. It could mean a front headlock. Right? These are all clinches. So if I'm shooting and maybe he's defending the shot, so I don't really have a nice double leg, I'll slide this up to his back and look, now I'm in a clinch. Boom, and we can start clinch fighting from there. Here, Tian Yu, you do that to me. So he shoots. Here, shoot for the leg first. So Tian Yu shoots for the leg and I'm defending that. Now slide up to the underhook. Yeah, now he's just going to climb up. Now he's got his underhook. Boom, exactly. So again, shooting for the leg. Or I could even move around the bike. This is also a clinch. Did you know that? Clinch just means grab. All right, here's another method. Joe, can I borrow you? We're going to use our strikes to make Joe think this is a long-range karate fight. Oh, stay away. We're doing taekwondo. Hiya. We're doing sanda. And sanda fighters use this a lot. Because they'll use a lead leg sidekick a lot to keep some distance, to hit the guy in the head, to fake the guy out and make him think, this is a close range fight. Ah, just kidding. Um, but then there's this other thing they like to do. Boom. Bridge the gap with a sidekick. Sidekick, drop it into his stance. 
Boom. Now I can start grabbing something. Right? Why? What's Sunda? It's kickboxing with throws and takedowns. So if I kick, boom, and I come back here, I give Joe the idea. This is, this is where the fight is happening. This is a kickboxing match. But instead of coming back to this distance, I land my foot in the pocket. Boom. Look at that. Now we've moved into a clinch. Here, Joe, do that with me. So we're going to move around. Joe's going to throw some side kicks. You can also do this with a front kick. And Hoist Gracie did that in UFC 1. Do you remember Hoist Gracie's front kick? He came out here like throwing the ugliest front kicks ever. But it wasn't because he was trying to kick the guy to death. It's because he was trying to get here so he could do that and then clinch with the guy. And again, if you fail your, your double leg, boom, stand up with your hooks. Look, now we're in a clinch. Here, Joe, do the same. Sprawling on, on him a little bit. He just stands up. Look, he's got his hooks. He's got a clinch from the back. That's a clinch too. Okay, the jab. So over here with Fang and same idea with the, uh, the sidekick, right? I want to make him think this is a boxing match. I want to fight outside the pocket. Yeah, I'm comfortable here. This is where I want to be. Oh, oh, just kidding. And then collapse that. So we don't want to chase the guy. We don't want to make him think, I'm coming after you. That's, that's silly. He'll get punched or he'll just move. But I want him to recognize this. I'm safe here. I'm safe not moving away. Because notice my footwork. In, out, in, out, in, out, in, in. Okay. And I'm collapsing his guard with my shoulder. Boom. And what can I do from here? Start shooting, clinching pummeling, etc. Flying sidekicks, the greatest Taekwondo technique ever. And why the flying sidekick? Same reason as the flying knee, because it puts you right in range. Let's say Joe is a really squirrely guy and he's moving away. Every time I try to try to get close, Joe moves away. People sometimes call this running away. It's not. He's, not. he's just trying to play it smart. I've got a longer reach. So it might be in Joe's best interest to stay out of the range of my reach when I'm trying to punch him so he doesn't get hit. So there's like three bodies of space between me and him. I can't even reach him with my sidekick. But if I take a step, ah, throw the flying sidekick. Check that out. Now I've moved into, into a position where I can start to clinch and do all these cool clinch attacks whether it's Judo, Greco-Roman, or Muay Thai. One step, one leap, one kick. Drop in there, grab something, attack. Continue. And Joe, you guys are close to the same height. So what I want you to do is this drill. You want to clinch with him. Joe, don't let Tian Yu clinch with you. Just stay out of range. Uh, okay, good. Now switch rolls. So now Tianyu, you stay out of the clinch. Joe, you clinch with Tianyu. The next thing you might notice, if it's an MMA fight or a boxing match, you're going to have a border, a barrier, like a cage or a ring. So here, Joe, can I borrow you? Something Joe did right there while he was chasing Tian Yu is he chased him toward the border, toward the barrier. So if I'm the evasive guy, Joe chased me toward the wall. I just ran out of room and now it's easy for Joe to clinch with me. Whereas if we're on the open mat here and Joe's chasing me, now I can run all over the place. Get off me, get off me, right? But as soon as I get my back over here, now he's going to shepherd me violently toward the cage and boom, clinches just got really easy. Okay, so let's uh, reverse rules here, Tian Yu. So if I want to get him, I can use my, use my striking to get him over here, boom, push him up against the cage. Now he's got nowhere to run. Now clinching gets real easy. I got some great videos on clinch fighting up against the cage. Go check them out on the technique list playlist. Okay, but anytime there's one of these, use it. 
So Tianyu is going to try to clinch the thing. There's a height difference. I don't know if the wide angle lens can let you see how much of a height difference, but it's there. So you'll notice because of the height difference, Tianyu is going to have to be a lot busier than Fang. So there's, there's no one simple solution that fits all sizes, right? Somebody asked me the other day, if I throw a sloppy looping hook, can't I turn that into a collar tie? Well, the, the problem there is if I throw a sloppy looping hook, well, one, it's, it's not, never a good idea to throw anything sloppy in a fight. But let's say, let's say, Lance, what did you do there first? You had your guard up. Yeah, he, you don't even have to move. Look at this. He's, he has the inside. Grab a collar tie. Look at that. Who has control in this situation? Joe does. Here, Joe, move me around. Yeah, Joe has the dominant clinch right there. I want to get to the inside, so I've got the dominant clinch. So I've got control. Fumble to the inside, right? So it's a good idea to spend a lot of time doing clinch sparring. Spend a lot of time inside the clinch, just sparring. Here, I'll show you how to do that. So um, we're just going to stay in a clinch, any clinch, collar ties, arm drags, underhooks, overhooks, whatever, and just touch each other with the knee or touch each other with the fist. Here, let's uh, go ahead. So play with me a little bit, you know, just like light sparring, but stay in the clinch. Oh. Yep. So you can see there are a lot of different things that are happening in any clinch. So I got a whizzer right there, right? I've got a bicep tie up, Joe's pummeling for the inside. It's made a little space. Switch to the collar tie. He is cross-facing right here to make some room. Boom. Little space for a knee right there. Leg drags. I'm putting upward pressure with my elbow here. Okay, now he's got the double underhook, so I'm going to get low. All right. Hummel. Get my own underhook. Switch to a collar tie. Make a little angle. Knee right there. Boom. And just keep going for like five, ten minutes. It's a great warm-up. But just remember, stay inside the clinch, any kind of clinch. And you might get bored with it. I never get bored with it. It's one of my favorite things to do. A little Russian two-on-one cross face. Ah. Ah. Jumping knee. Frame with the leg right there. And if, if the clinch breaks, oh no, he's using my own technique against me. Go ahead, go ahead. And, yeah, if you think about it, jujitsu is all clinch fighting, all of it. So if you're good at jujitsu, then just think about the principles you use on the ground in jujitsu, underhooks, overhooks, collar ties, pummeling to the inside. All of this stuff is applicable in Muay Thai. All of this stuff is applicable in wrestling and Greco-Roman, etc. So these two are similar height right here. Clinch sparring, you see they're pummeling, touching each other with the knee. You can also work your sweeps and trips and takedowns if you want, or set some limitations. A lot of hand fighting in these exchanges. Not every clinch is, is equal. Not every clinch is equal. Some clinches will facilitate strikes with the knees or the elbows. Some will create unbalances for sweeps or takedowns. Some clinches will leave you very unbalanced if you want to attack with your knees, but give you a lot of upper body control. Notice they broke the clinch, went right back to it. It's very important to get comfortable with the clinch. I would say most people are just not naturally comfortable with this. Getting close to the cage, now they're using the cage. If you have a cage, if you have a wall, mats on the walls, you should definitely spend time clinch fighting. Right there, yeah, work your takedowns. All right, good stuff, guys, nice work. Other ways to get into a clinch, Catching a kick, uh, kick him where you want him to kick you. So maybe I'll throw uh, a quick left body kick. Just a quick one. 
Ah, and there's a high chance he'll kick me right back. And now I know this is coming and I can either throw him or move into the clinch that I want. I can kick him in the leg, boom, so he'll kick me in the leg. And I'll grab this, I'll hit him, boom, try to take down or get a clinch and boom, attack from there. How else? How about work into a clinch off of boxing exchanges? If you find a guy who likes to fight toe to toe, he doesn't like to move outside of the pocket, but he's just always getting the inside. Just remember, keep your punches straight. Keep your angles off the center whenever possible. Bring uppercuts into the equation too. Because when you do that, you're going to lift his chin and you're going to start creating little openings in his guard. All right? What else? Parry the jab. When he starts throwing the jab, parry it. This little circle creates an opening for an underhook there. I mean, I can create an opening for a counter, or I can create an opening for an underhook. So we're out there jabbing. I want him to jab me, so I'll throw a couple jabs at him. When these jabs come, now I'll pummel. Let's do this really slow, and you'll probably think this looks like Kung Fu or Tai Chi or Wing Chun. Eh, maybe. But it's just pummel, pummel, block, boom. It's the cloud hands from Tai Chi, right? Oh. And now we've worked into whatever clinch we want to work there. Full speed. It's just pummel, circle, step in, right? And that goes back to the very first thing I told you, which is just reach for the inside. Reach for the inside. So again, with the clinch fighting drill, we're always, we should always be pummeling for the inside. He has a collar tie on the inside. I want one. He's got one of these, so I'm going to reach for the reverse collar tie, which is the inside. He's reaching for an underhook, so I reach for an underhook. So he reaches for his own. So I pummel for my own. So I'm getting, right, this is an inside grip. This is an inside grip. This is an inside grip. Those are all good. Always get those. Thank you for watching. Now get out there and train. Do you like the rash guards and shorts that I wear in my YouTube videos? Well, get your own at xmarshall.com, and don't forget to use my code RAMSEY10 for 10% off your entire purchase. Over the years, I've been offered a lot of sponsorship opportunities on YouTube, and I've turned most of them down, except for xmarshall.com for a very specific reason. It is a brand that I use. It's a brand that I trust. They make quality gear. I don't want to sell you crap that takes your attention away from getting out there and training. X Marshall is a brand that supports athletes and has from the very beginning. So if you're going to get training gear anyway, it might as well be the good stuff.